What's up, y'all? My name is Devonte, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Now, for all the things I've been saying about WrestleMania, building up to this moment right now, I stand by everything that I said. I think this is the worst road to WrestleMania I've ever seen. I'm not confident in regards to anything going into this show because of the build. But with that being said, it still is WrestleMania. And with that being said, a motherfucker got himself a 12 pack of Seagrams. Gotta stay light tonight. Gotta stay coherent. All right. Um, oh, then again, Seagrams can get you kind of drunk depending on how many you drink. But that's okay. That, 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 that's okay. Because I'm going to be, I'm going to be focused. I'm going to be that way. Because for everything that I say, for everything that I do, for any wrestling commentary channel, journalists out there, any type of media that's related to wrestling, this is this night. This is about this night. Everything builds up to this night. All the commentary videos, everything builds up to this moment. It's WrestleMania. It's the biggest night in professional wrestling. And for me, technically speaking, I guess by default, it's the biggest night in my channel, right? So you got to get confident for that. You got to stay poised for that. You got to stay hyped for it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be entertaining. And who knows? Like I said, just because the road to WrestleMania was absolutely dog dick, it doesn't mean that the show itself won't deliver, right? There's a good opportunity. There's a good chance. And actually, there's a good decent ratio when the road to WrestleMania wasn't really necessarily all that well. But the show ended up delivering, you know, and then vice versa. Also, you know, you look at WrestleMania 25, a relatively good build to WrestleMania. But, you know, the WrestleMania show in itself was, again, absolute dog dick. Right. And then you got some shows where the build to it was actually pretty shit. Also, not this shit compared to, I guess, back in those days, you probably say it's a good build today. But in that time, you would consider that shit. Like WrestleMania 24, for an example. People don't talk about this that often. But WrestleMania 24, uh, the build to it, at least from what I can remember growing up as a 16-year-old at the time, I didn't quite care for it. And looking at forums and stuff like that, no one really thought that that was a good build to WrestleMania. And then WrestleMania 24 ended up being one of the best WrestleManias of all time, right? So you can take the good with the bad, you can take the bad with the good. So here's me staying confident. Uh, damn! And here's me thinking I could probably add WrestleMania 40 to WrestleMania 24 and a list. And trust me, I can't think of it off the top of my head outside of WrestleMania 24. Here's hoping to a list of, or this being added to a list, easy for me to say. I'm tongue twisted. I'm I drunk two grand. I drunk two Kansas City grams right, right? Don't judge me, motherfuckers, all right? Gonna get wasted tonight in the way I can only can. That makes sense? Coherent? Okay, we're good. Grammar. Okay. Like I said, no more talking about this shit. Although I will say, did you guys, because I'm watching the pre-show right now, you guys caught that shit when they're talking about uh, Sami Zayn and Gunther? And they're like, uh, oh, <laughs> you know, this is, reminds me of Rocky. And then CM Punk is like, what the hell's a Rocky? And they're like, you never heard of Rocky before? And CM Punk is like, Rocky? Huh? I know so many people aren't going to fucking get that. He's picking on John Moxley. I... <laughs> Y'all know that, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure y'all know that. I covered the fucking video, like, what? What was it? Like, back in 2022, I think? I think it was 2022 when I covered that. Or was it 2023? It actually could have been 2023 now that I think about it. I think it was last year. But, yeah, that's that's one of those little inside things that I guess, like, only us would, like, recognize. Only us kind of nerdy-ass fans. But, uh, really quick, I usually don't do this, but because it is a WrestleMania after all, I think it's only fitting that, um, uh, god damn it, stupid ass, fucking, hang on, doing two things at once, hang on, god damn it, no, you're not gonna restart right now, phone, gonna look at my phone, look at the card for not one, just to kind of get you guys into the mix, just in case you somehow, for reasons I don't know, skipped WrestleMania, we got Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch, Gunther versus Sami Zayn, Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso. Great promo package by them, by the way. Great, great, great video package. Six pack ladder match: Bianca Belair, Naomi, Na uh, Jay Cargill versus Damage Control, Rey Mysterio and Andrade Cien Almas uh, versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio, and The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. There's a lot of potential just looking at the matches on its own. Right, right. Looking at the matches by themselves, there's a lot of potential. But it's not lost on me that there is also a lot of potential for this to be absolute shit. And like I said, NXT tonight or earlier today absolutely fucking demolished it. So if this is better than that, then we're looking at a fine, fine WrestleMania, okay? And by the way, don't let that get to your head of tonight delivers. WrestleMania night one usually tends to deliver. It's night two that I'm actually really afraid of. So, you know, always keep that in mind. But with that being said, folks, no more talking. It's time to get into WrestleMania.
yeah, they fucking killed it in this match. This was great. This was great shit. It started off relatively slow, but as it started to pick up, yeah, these girls, they 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 killed it. And you know what? Yo, shout out to Becky Lynch. Apparently, she has strep throat and she has like a hundred degree fever. I mean, they could be exaggerating a little bit as far as the fear, because I don't know how the fuck someone can operate with a hundred degree fever. Not saying that it's impossible, but I don't know how you could put in a match like that and operate at a hundred degree fever. I'm but you know what? Whatever. She's sick. You know, and for her to go out there and put on a performance like that, you know, she did her best. She did her best. You could tell she was a little bit lethargic in the beginning. She wasn't really hitting as hard as you would think she would, which I'm going to presume that has something to do with her being sick. But as the match started to pick up, yeah, it was one spot. Actually, it was two spots that were really, really cool in this match. Like they were going back and forth. And like it was a spot where like Becky grabbed her arm and then like she tried to go for like a spinning heel kick. But then like Rhea ducked it and then she lifted her up and she she fucking dropped her with the fucking um riptide I, I, it's hard to explain it was a really really cool setup to how she did the riptide it was really fucking cool but she only got like a two count out of it right and it was another really really cool move where like becky lynch she hit like a superplex right and then she floated into a cross arm breaker transitioned that into the disarmor and then like rhea ripley she hoisted her up until like an electric chair drop position they went towards the ropes they both flipped over the ropes out to the ring still in the electric chair drop position and then Rhea dropped her directly on the floor then it came to the finish where like Rhea Ripley she was trying to deadlift suplex Becky Lynch back into the ring but then Becky Lynch kind of like she hit like she because she was working the arm the entire time she fucked with her shoulder and yanked it on the ropes, which had her in perfect position for the, um, for what she calls the move again. Not the, um, what she called the move? The, oh yeah, the manhandle slam. And she attempts to do it because she did it the first time and she only got like a one, a two count out of it, right? She attempts it off the turnbuckle, but Rhea Ripley, she kind of like stopped herself in midair, picked her up and hit her with the riptide against the turnbuckle which put her into a position to get hit with another riptide and then Rhea Ripley picked up the win. Again, the way the match was starting off, it was relatively so. I like the entrance. Excuse me. I like the entrances and everything also. Uh Becky Lynch came out with uh passages from her book being read which her which made her come through like a 3D animation of the book in itself. And Rhea Ripley was played out by uh, the band that sings her song, uh, some screamo emo dork band. Uh, there, I mean, but I will say though, Rhea Ripley, like she was really having the time of her life, you know, because I heard that's her favorite band, and I know. Cause I remember hearing a couple of years ago, people were like comparing her to looking like the lead singer. And then like, I see the lead singer and I was like, Oh, I see it now. Okay, cool. And like, he plays her out to the ring and it's a cool fucking entrance. I can't lie. I mean, the band in itself are kind of lame, but like, I mean the entrance in itself, the pump and circumstances of it all was fucking awesome. I liked it. And like I said, overall, it was a fine match. W was it better than Charlotte and Rhea last year? Mm, no, no. No, but it's not to say that it was a bad match and it wasn't too, too far from it. Rhea and Charlotte was going to be hard to beat regardless because that's one of the best women matches I've ever seen in my life. So it was going to be hard to like meet up to that standard regardless. And not to mention Becky Lynch was sick. Maybe if she was at 100%, the match would have been a hell of a lot better. Not to say that the match was bad, but it's to say that it was hindered a little bit because she was moving again, very lethargic in the very, very beginning of the match, right? Her spots were in as hard hit you could tell that she was moving kind of slow a little tiny bit you couldn't even hear her call out spots like you usually do that could probably have more to do with the fact that she couldn't talk so loud because of the strep throat but like i said kudos to becky lynch for going out there thugging it out getting the match over with and rhea ripley contend she continues her year-long reign as women's champion hopefully when she actually you know get out of she leaves wrestling she has a new challenger if you will she'll probably you know defend the belt a little bit more because she's like literally the women's version of roman reigns the only difference is she actually shows up every fucking week but title defense wise it's not really that much of a difference between her and roman reigns so hopefully we can get some some maybe it may be Liv morgan you know we can get some competitive matches for the women's championship we can get some more competitors going after her for the women's championship some raw is gonna happen on monday unfortunately i can actually review i'm gonna actually review raw also by the way i get off of work because i gotta go back to work on monday that's the end of my vacation but i get off of work at six o'clock in the afternoon Afternoon or in the evening so I, I can actually review raw which i'm gonna do because it's the night after wrestlemania my last raw review before you know i review it again in like a couple of months from now but that's 
there. We're, we're at WrestleMania right now. And like I said, overall, get match from Rhea and Becky. Started off a little bit slow, so I'm going to knock a few points. I left just a little bit, a few points. Don't worry. I'm just not going to be drastic, but a few points because, you know, it did start off slow. But a little bit of a caveat. It was because Becky Lynch is sick as fuck. But on to the next match we go. WrestleMania, folks. WrestleMania, WrestleMania, WrestleMania. That was a fun match. That was a really fun match. That's what you need on WrestleMania. That's why I'm saying bring the money in the bank briefcase back to WrestleMania. But this is a fun little replacement. This was a fun, fun, fun match, bro. So, like, we got a little bit. So, I took notes for this match, right? Because I knew I was going to take notes. I knew it was going to be a bunch of spots. Before the match even started, we had a little tiny botch in the entrance area where you had um, uh, Johnny Gargano and, uh, no, was it? I think it was New Catch Republic. They came out and, like, the Titantron screen was still showing, um, was it um, Awesome Truth? Oh, no, I think it was Gargano. I think it was The Way, right? I, I don't know. I think it, it was a botch, though. They showed the wrong Titantron and fucking, um, fucking the announcers were picking on them. I mean, nothing big. Let's get to the match in itself, though. Uh, you got an airplane spin from Tyler Bate to Finn Balor with the ladder still on Finn Balor and then knocked out Kofi Kingston before Tyler Bate, because Finn dropped the ladder eventually, then he just threw him through another ladder. It didn't break, though. We got a double moonsault from the new Catch Republic on the outside of the ring on both sides on each team, all the teams. You got uh, Damian Priest. He had a razor's edge on Pete Dunne and to bait on the ladder. It was a really, really fucking cool spot. Chufus, so the comedy spot of this is that like when that was all said and done, you have Truth, who's on the outside of the ring because Miss, he was hurt, right? And you had Priest and Finn Balor who was selling for the Miz. Truth is asking for a fucking hot tag in the middle of the match, bruh. And he gets the hot tag, right? He starts to clear house until eventually he gives Finn Balor an AA on the ladder and he goes for a pinfall. Because our truth is our truth. That's why. Awesome Truth then agreed because DIY comes in the ring and they agreed, okay, you go after one set of the titles, we go after one set of the titles, which had me confused because I thought this was just like a winner takes all, but I guess technically in a weird makeshift way, this is technically a two out of three falls ladder match, if that makes any sense. A two out of three falls six pack challenge ladder match is essentially what it was. Before, um, while they're going after it, A-Town Down comes, and they push them over, and then they take down the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. So, A-Town Down is your new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Very reminiscent to the Triple Threat match at WrestleMania 2000 with Benoit, Jericho, and Angle. Very similar to that, where uh, Jericho won the European Championship, and Benoit won the Intercontinental Championship. Very similar in multiple ways when we get done with this match. Uh, Wood Springboard Elbow Drop Champa on a bridge ladder so that was a pretty gnarly spot uh new catch republic because waller and because grayson wall was trying to go back for the second set of belts the uh tag team championships for the raw belts and uh champa came and um he pushed over the ladder uh, what was the champa no i think it was um my bad i think it was ncr i think it was new catch republic they both tipped over the ladder while waller was climbing up the ladder and then he went through a uh, another ladder a bridge ladder on the outside of the ring and he was fucked for the rest of the match uh as i said before uh xavier woods he had a springboard elbow uh on champa through another bridge ladder that was on the ropes and on the ladder in the inside of the ring uh kingston because woods was going for the belts kingston ended up doing a trust fall from the ladder to the outside of the ring on the group of tag teams to allow uh, Xavier Woods to go for the belts, but unfortunately he was cut off by Gargano, who went, or I guess by Champ. No, I guess he was cut off by, uh, I forgot who he was cut off by, but regardless though, Gargano ended up hitting a slingshot DDT on, P oh, that's who fucked them over. Uh, it was uh, the New Catch Republic. That's who fucked them over. Eventually though, while they're trying to go for the belts, Gargano stopped them and Champa stopped them. Gargano ended up hitting a slingshot DDT on Pete Dunne from the inside of the ring to the outside of the ring through a table. And then Champa ended up hitting the air race siren or um, I guess the white noise for some of you people who don't know what the move is to Tyler Bate off the very top of the ladder onto the floor. That did not like it was fun to take. Uh, R-Truth comes in the ring while all this mayhem is going on and he's trying to go for the belts. But then JD McDonough comes inside the ring and then he interferes and tries to screw over uh, R-Truth. He pulls him down and he brings in Finn Balor and then they're both trying to go for the belts or he's trying to help him go for the belts. Uh, that's that's when um, New Day come in with chairs and then they attack Balor and um, that's when they um, so they attack Balor with the chair and uh, Dunn 
uh, or uh, uh, McDonough with the chair, right? And then eventually they push uh, J.D. McDonough off of the ladder and then he goes through two tables on the outside of the ring. Uh, Priest, he comes in the ring eventually and he attacks both uh, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston. He hits a razor's edge on Kofi Kingston on top of a chair. And then Priest and Miz, they're like battling on top of the ladder when Priest is trying to go for the belts himself. The ladder was a little bit unsteady because the legs were fucked up on the ladder and he was trying to go for a choke slam off the ladder, but unfortunately the ladder buckled underneath both of them, which looked really scary and that could have been a really, really fucked up position. So eventually a ladder comes in the ring. They said our truth though, and then, but I didn't see you through it originally. Um, Priest, he climbs up the ladder and he attempts to get the belts, but then he was pushed off and then eventually our truth gives him an AA from the inside of the ring to the outside of the ring and then he grabs the raw tag team belts and what do you know it come up as a bitch right our truth wins the raw tag team championships from the uh, from the judgment day they lost both belts without even being participants within the match in itself or within the actual decision in itself that's why i say it's reminiscent of the benoit jericho and angle because benoit pinned jericho to win his belt and jericho uh tapped out benoit to, oh i think he pinned benoit for the lion salt to win his belt right and there you go right there, man. So now it's official. The tag team belts after so long is officially split. The Raw guys have the Raw belts and the SmackDown guys have the SmackDown belts. So now we're done. We are done. And now that we have the brand split coming up too, I could have thinking a I could have think of a better time for all this to occur. Like, finally, you got so many great quality tag teams for both Raw and SmackDown. Now these guys can officially, officially have a totally, like, separate fucking brand split if they play their cards right going into the brand split or going into the, um, what's it called again? The, uh, the draft. So thank God this match was fucking awesome. And thank God because now this just kills two birds with one stone. You got a killer match out of this. And at the same time, you were able to separate the fucking belts. Thank God. But yeah, solid match. This is the kind of match that you need on a WrestleMania. Smart decision to put this in the second spot because usually the second spot is usually for the dead match. Nah, keep the quality. Keep the, keep the quality going, man. Keep the audience hot. The audience was hot as fuck, man, for this match. Everything was good. Solid match for a WrestleMania ladder match. I loved it. Great, great match. Ah, uh, they had it. The match was actually really, really good until they bought these fucking geezers out here to ruin the goddamn match. Why would you do that? Why? Who thought that was a good idea? Like, what the fuck? No one gives a shit about these geezer-ass football players. <laughs> Bruh, what the fuck? What was that? The match was so good building up into the moment till the conclusion fucking happened. Bruh, that spot. That spot from Andrade and Rey Mysterio, that's the highlight right there, bruh. In the very beginning of the match, bruh, that was a dope-ass move. So Andrade puts Rey Mysterio on his shoulders for like an electric chair drop. They're both standing on a turnbuckle on the outside of the ring. And then like Andrade jumps with Mysterio on his shoulders. And like they both do a simultaneous like fucking crossbody and an electric chair drop position to Dominic and uh, Santos Escobar. That was the highlight of the entire fucking match. That was lit as fuck. They did Joaquin uh, Wilde's little uh, spot also with the whole little launching off the middle of the rope all the way out to the middle of the ring. And also, I will notate too, I like the fact that the commentators aren't really stupid anymore. I noticed that these past couple of weeks. They're actually starting to talk more about backstage stuff that fans are aware of. I mean, you can't really hide from it anymore. I mean, when you hear it talked about on Twitter, when you hear it talked about here and there, they actually did that also by having CM Punk talk about his relationship with Triple H on the um, kickoff show. I like that they're doing that now because, look, I'm a guy who doesn't really care too much for the non kayfabe stuff when, you know, looking at the product in itself. But, like, it's there. I mean, it'd be kind of retarded to just ignore it when it's right fucking there. And I liked how the announcers, they acknowledged the fact that people are discussing whether or not Carlito would turn on Rey Mysterio because of his movements. And they called it conspiracy, which is fine. You can call, I would actually prefer you to call it that, you know, so it doesn't really look like you're outright breaking kayfabe. You're just acknowledging what's happening online, right? The chitter chatter online. And they were talking about whether or not Carlito was going to actually screw over Rey Mysterio because of the scuttlebutt online and Twitter. That was actually really good. I like that. But this finish, bruh this fucking finish so like 
set so like all the guys from the LWO and Legato del Fantasma, they're getting into it, they're squabbling. Santos throws Ray into like the uh turnbuckle, right? Into the little post thing. And um he's asking Dominic to give him a chair so he could bash Ray Mysterio's brains in, right? And when uh when he went when he goes to go grab the chair, what's his name? Like these two fucking luchador mask guys, th these fucking humongous guys, goddamn grizzly bears come out of nowhere. And they take the chairs from um, Dominic Mysterio and they run them into the um, ring post, right? And we're, I'm looking at my, who the fuck are these guys? What the fuck? I mean, it's actually kind of a hill move. I mean, I know they were trying to help out Rey Mysterio, the babyface. But in reality, it is kind of a hill move to just interfere in the match like that. I mean, if you're a real babyface, you just do it yourself or lose with pride. You know, I'd rather die like a man than live like a coward, Rey Mysterio. You goddamn coward. But uh, when they did that, it gave Rey Mysterio the opportunity to uh, hit a frog splash on uh, Santos Escobar for the win. And look, it wasn't a bad match. It was just the conclusion, right? The finale that really got to me. Because these two geezers who had nothing to do with any of this, they, they win the match and they celebrate that they take their mask off. And it's Pat McAfee's friends, I guess. They're like it's some football players from the Philadelphia uh, Eagles, I guess, or the 49ers or the 76ers. I don't fucking know. I'm stupid when it comes to sports. But, like, I just don't get why did you have to insert them into this like why why was that supposed to be a pop for the crowd did anyone pop i didn't pop did you guys pop did the crowd pop i didn't hear anybody pop fuck i no one cared about these fucking geezers and for you to just pop them into the match randomly like that for no reason whatsoever i didn't like that i hated that i hated everything about that bro stop don't do that ever again Ruined the entire fucking match, honestly. I, I was actually willing to give this match like probably three and one four stars when it was building up until the finish. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock it down to two and three fours, bro. I'm gonna knock it down to two and three fours because it was actually a damn good match building up until the finish. And then that happened. And then, yeah, no. Now I, now I hate this match and I hate myself for watching this match. Thank you, WWE, for ruining it. I mean, all you had to do was just a straightforward match. Dominic Mysterio gets the pin, so I don't get any of my predictions wrong. And yes, I'm a little bit biased because Dominic Mysterio took the guy, and I think it was Santos who took the pinfall. And now my predictions, uh, I was on a streak, a two match streak, you gosh darn titty fucking bastards. I'm good though, I'm good though. It's WrestleMania, I gotta remember, it's WrestleMania. All right, coming up next is Jimmy and Jay Uso. So we're gonna get back to the WrestleMania card if you don't mind, but seriously. Retired football players randomly inserted into wrestling matches should not should not be a thing. Can we not do that anymore? Can we agree? No more football players. Gracias. Ah man, I didn't I didn't like this at all, man. Only because I was just starting. They were just starting. It's kind of like the main event today at um Stand and Deliver. It's like right when it was starting to get good, they want to end the match, bro. It was a super kick fest the entire time. Now. Excuse me, I'll start from the beginning because that fucking entrance was hyped as fuck. Little Wing coming out with uh, Jay Uso and doing like the fucking stunting like my daddy, stunting like my whatever song he was doing back in the early 2000s. And he was, was that the song he was playing? I can't even fucking remember. But yeah, um, I mean, maybe he wasn't out there to kiss him on the lips, so I can't really remember. But um, he comes out and he hypes up Jay Uso and they're all like, you know, celebrating and shit in the ring and whatever. And the match in itself, bruh. Like, it started off good. You know, Jimmy Uso had the advantage. And then it started to morph into just a super kick fest. You know, both guys just trading super kicks left and right. Super kick, super kick, super kick. It got to a point where they kind of did the whole strong style shit. Where it's like, give it to me. And then, like, one was super kick and then the other was super kick. But Jimmy, I mean, Jay was uh, having the advantage, right? And I like the back and forth because I liked how the crowd was participating with the yee. No ye, ye, no ye. That was hyped as fuck. I dug that, but it's like as the match was going on, bruh, it got to a point where Jay was just super kicking him over and over and over. It even hit him with a house call. Uh, shot the sword Strickland, right? And like, it got to a point where Jimmy Uso was kind of begging, right? Because Jay was gonna hit him with the final super kick, and like Jimmy covered up, and he was like saying, "I'm sorry," begging for forgiveness, and Jay was looking at him like. Like, he was buying it. He was buying him. And he picked them back up to, like, hug him. And then Jay, uh, Jimmy Uso ended up hitting him with a super kick, right? And then he knocks him out. And he goes for a body splash, and he gets it, but he only gets a two count. 
Then <clears throat> the advantage goes back to Jay when he hits him with a super kick, and then he hits him with the body splash, and then he wins. That was it. And it's like, bro, there was so much more you could have got out of that, man. And instead, like, it just ended, in my opinion, rather abruptly. I felt like there was more that could have actually been gotten out of that. I felt like they should have got more heat, in my opinion, on Jimmy Uso, or Jimmy Uso should have got more heat. And then you should have, you should have went to more the storytelling elements with them, you know, begging for forgiveness and all that. It's, it, was, it was like a speed course. Like, they were trying to get the match over with, bro. And he has such a hype promo package to build up to all this. That's what kills it the most. It was a great promo package that preceded all this. The build for it wasn't really all there, but they had some semblance. But that's just more of a package deal with the entire road to WrestleMania being absolutely dog shit. And the announcers were touching on the fact that Jimmy Uso screwed over Jay Uso for the undisputed title for the ta for the Intercontinental Champ. They didn't bring up the tag team titles, but they screwed them over for the tag team titles. So, as, he just screwed him over from being a triple crown champion right about now, right? There was so much detail and background that kind of went into this that should have played into the match. And it's like we didn't get enough out of this. Not to mention. This is one of the rare times where I outright disagree with the booking of this. I never complain about the booking of who wins and who loses. That's not my forte. I usually don't give a fuck because who cares? But this is one of those rare instances where I really did. I, I think this was the bad. I think this was a bad idea. I don't think Jay Uso should have won the match. I think Jimmy should have won the match. Jimmy should have won the match, and they should have ran it back at the next pay-per-view, and then maybe you give the win to Jay, and then you run it back one more time at one more pay-per-view, and you have like a gimmick match, and then Jimmy wins the match. Unless they're going to go the Hardy Boys route, and then Jay pick us, picks up the win here, and then maybe they have another match at the next pay-per-view, and then Jimmy wins the match. They could definitely go that route, but I just feel like it would have been a hell of a lot more um, susten sustainable. I don't think sustainable would have been the right word. Um, let's just say it would have been the correct decision because I can't think of the word right now to have Jimmy go over because that would have prolonged this a little bit further. It is what it is in the end of the day. I just felt like, again, just like I said for the main event as Standard delivered, that there was a lot more meat on the bone. I can't be the only one who's thinking this, right? Like, there was so much substance in this match that you could have got out of it. And I can't help but think that this was rather disappointing. It wasn't necessarily what I would call a horrible match. Now, it got really repetitive, but if the repetitiveness played into the story, which it was for a minute, I would have forgiven all of this because it's like, okay, it's not about the actual moves in itself. I've never been a guy who actually necessarily cares about the moves as far as what dictates the actual um, satisfaction of the match in itself. You know what I mean? And we didn't necessarily get that out of Jimmy and Jay. And I hope they run this back. I hope that they go out of their way and they let these two have another match. And Jimmy actually gets the win and then we have a rubber match. Because and, and one can argue what's really the point because Jay won this match right here. He kind of just defeated the whole point of the feud, which is what I was saying. Like, I just didn't understand that. But if they were to go out of their way to have Jimmy go over the next match, at least then there'll be an excuse for a rubber match. Again, I, I just didn't dig anything about this match as far as how because now with the finish happening the way that it happened and how quickly it just dwelled directly into the decision it just makes me think like it just ended up being a repetitive match right it just ended up being them spamming super kick it, it ended up with them spamming holding down box essentially if you were playing a wrestling game and you know i i just felt that there were more there were more toys for them to play with as far as plot devices within their story but it's over with now hopefully they run it back and we can get something a little bit more competent but that's just me maybe you guys don't want to want maybe you don't want to watch the match anymore because this kind of soured you on it and i wouldn't blame you but <sighs> that was that was rather disappointing i can't even find that's probably the worst match so far this year yeah definitely the worst match so far this 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 event not this year this event but uh, I see uh, the, the Kabuki Warriors and Damage Control coming out right now. So uh, let's get to this match. Okay, <clears throat> my fellow men, my fellow men of culture, if you will. Before we talk about this match, I would just like to highlight how scrumptious, how delectable, and how delicious um, Dakota Kai looks, Naomi looks, and Bianca Belair looks in particular. Now, don't get it twisted. Jay Cargill looked fine, too. I wasn't quite paying too much attention to Asuka and Kyrie because they looked wild as hell. But in particular, Bianca, Naomi, and Dakota. 
And to be quite frank, oh, actually, I take that back. Looking at, um, um, sorry, this sounds like a golf game right now, but um, I just want to get just shh, shh, for a second. Excuse me, excuse me. All right. Ugh, God. Okay. All right. I'm good. I'm good. <coughs> Pause. Hang on. All right. I'm back. Sorry. I had to clean up. Um. So like, I was gonna say just those three girls, but then Jay Cargill, she showed herself. So um, yeah. I'm gonna throw her into uh, that mix also. Okay. Now that my mind is clear and uh, other places are clear, uh, this match was um nothing more than just it was just a showcase for the uh for the queens, the black queens. K-W-E-E-N-S Queens. This match was pretty much all entrance. I mean, it wasn't that it was a bad match. Just nothing really happened. It was, I'm not going to say it was a squash match, but it kind of felt like, a, like an enhancement match on an episode of Raw. That's what it kind of felt like to me. That's the kind of vibes that it gave me. It wasn't anything that you have to really go out of your way to go watch. Um, the entrances were cool, though. You know, you had the Kabuki Warriors coming out and... You know, I mean, are they called uh, Kabukis too? The women with the little uh, umbrellas? I think they're called Kabukis also, right? I could be wrong. I, I think they are, though. I mean, I'm not really um, in touch with uh, my Japanese side besides uh, Akiri Toriyama because Akiri Toriyama is uh, a goat. And, um, you know, he hangs out with the Alpha Academy, so he's awesome. Rest in peace. But outside of that, um, yeah, I'm not really too familiar with the names of the uh, the girls. I forgot. No, it's, it's something else. I, I think they were actually called something else. Whatever. Who cares? But they came out and they started throwing rice all over them. Devontae, stop being racist. I can't help it. Bruh, do you see what they're doing? It's fucking material for me. God damn it. But um, yeah, they started throwing rice all over them. And then eventually we got the, uh, the three black queens. They came out and they were all dressed like I couldn't tell. Like say, they said, the Avengers, right? So like, it kind of like they were cosplaying as X Men. I mean, I get that Jay Cargill is supposed to be Storm. It looked like Bianca Belair was supposed to be Cyclops, and I don't know what the fuck Naomi was. I mean, I seen the hat and I was kind of thinking like, well, like did she go like Super Saiyan Raiden or some shit? I don't know. <laughs> like like what was that? Like she looked more like Raiden from fucking Mortal Kombat than anybody else. I don't know what the fuck Naomi was trying to pull off. Regardless though, uh, they both um, had fat asses, and that's all that really mattered in the end of the day. But they came out to the ring and they had their match. Um, I really can't really tell you anything special that necessarily happened. I mean, almost every spot in that match, I wish I was there to take, mainly from Naomi. Um, because she was just like throwing her ass all around the ring and i was just like damn i wish i, I really wish that was that was that was me um, but that's that that unfortunately did not occur that was not me <sighs> sorry <laughs> i'm back in sorry Ugh. thoughts thoughts i had to clear my mind again all right but no uh the match in itself i'm trying to think what else happened in the match that was actually something worth talking about um trying to think yeah really nothing let's just go directly to the finish you know uh asuka she sprayed some mist just like i did now inside uh Kyrie sane's face and then um afterwards uh bianca Belair whipped asuka in the stomach with her hair and then uh jay cargo ended up hitting her um well i don't want well, she has a what jaded right is that what she called the jaded i think that's what she called it in aew the whole little glam sound move she did it to dakota kai and then like she pen she won the match and that was pretty much it. I honestly have nothing else to say about it. Can we get to the next match? Because I feel like I, I, I got one more in me. I can go one more round. Let's just get to the next match. I don't think you guys need to hear my goddamn degeneracy. Okay, so we're going to go into Sami Zayn and Gunther. And I'll have more to say about that match than uh, this. Oh, we got to go jack off. Give me a second. So, like, okay. So, I got a lot to say about this match. I got a lot to say about this match with Gunther and Sami Zayn. So, first and foremost... Let's just get this out of the way. Gunther is no longer the Intercontinental Champion. Sami Zayn is the Intercontinental Champion. This was a great match, right? This was a great match. <clears throat> How do I say this? And I'm going to get some heat probably when I say this. I'm going to get some shit when I probably say this. But bear with me when I say this, bro. The commentary the, the commentary team did a great, great, great fucking job on selling this. Sami Zayn building this up backstage. Hugging his son. You know, embracing his wife. Chad Gable confronting him. Seeing Kevin Owens and 
all this stuff was fantastic. I get it. I understand. It's somehow in some way I can't I can't put my finger on it. It still kind of felt somewhat underwhelming, right? And, and I understand. I'm probably the only person thinking this, but it just felt like Sammy, for the most part, towards the second half, was just selling the whole time, right? And he just hits Gunther with a brain buster and then two haluva kicks. I was kind of hoping that Gunther would have kicked out and then we would have built this up a little bit more, right? Like a little bit more anticipation for the finish in itself to actually complement the story, but it just didn't really hit that next gear. Does that and that's that's kind of the theme of this WrestleMania so far, where it's like it's not like the matches themselves are bad. They just aren't hitting the next gear. Not to mention with all due respect to Sami Zayn, and it's not as if he's not a good babyface, his shtick, this started from the bottom, now I'm here, underdog thing, it doesn't necessarily work with Sami Zayn. Like, I feel like this was really, really forced. Like, does that make any sense? Like, I'm not bitching about the match per se, and people can be like, you can have your take on it, you can say that, Devonta, you're complaining. I'm not saying it was a bad match. I'm just saying that it, it, it felt underwhelming. It felt really, really underwhelming. And it felt very, very forced. Look, again, not that guy to play Booker. Not that guy to sit behind his armchair and, you know, say to himself, well, he could book better matches than WWE. But there's just something about this story that just felt incomplete, right? And not to mention, I feel like, and this is just my thoughts, the wrong guy, sh it, it's not as if I'm saying that Simeon Gunther shouldn't have had a match i'm just saying there's something about this timing that also feels very very off chad gable should have been in this spot the more and more i'm seeing chad gable the more and more i'm seeing him embracing Sami Zayn and the family story that he was trying to tell and look i understand at the end of the day i'm not stupid i get it Sami Zayn, he he's a bigger name than chad gable he has more star power than the chad gable but it just felt like the story was tailor-made for a guy like chad gable for him to hug his daughter and then send her back to embrace his wife right to maybe confront some of the people within the alpha academy before going out to the stage before Sami Zayn telling him to get the job done that's what it felt like that's who it should have went to but instead it went to Sami Zayn, and you're trying to tell the story of Sami Zayn being an underdog but literally aside from the world championship Sami Zayn has done everything in wwe i don't buy him as an underdog anymore i don't buy him as a baby face anymore and that's why so many people were complaining about Sami Zayn when he got the spot to begin with i remember hearing the news about Sami Zayn being frustrated that he didn't like how the fans were uh pretty much rebelling against him in favor of chad gable because dude you're no longer you remember that promo for cm punk talking about uh john cena saying he's no longer the underdog he's now the new york yankees i'm not saying that Sami Zayn is the new york yankees but goddamn it all man the guy is tailor-made right he's a made man man in wwe he's never gonna get fired he's a name in that company he will forever have a place within that company that dude probably has a million dollar contract right about now or more right he's not the underdog anymore he's not the guy who deserves to be in that position and yeah they had a killer match yeah they had a match that in my opinion fit the build for a wrestlemania and even then it never hit that threshold and even then i never felt like i was really into the match in itself not to mention i don't like the fact that Sami Zayn, because when you look at the pattern of gunther matches and all the people that he's faced and all the stuff that he had to go through in order to hold on to the belt for nearly two years it just felt like Sami Zayn just kind of jumped over into the front of the line got the spot and then beat gunther for the intercontinental champion when in reality, the things that Gunther has been doing with that title, one can argue that Sami Zayn should have lost this match, and maybe a rematch would have been suffice, and then maybe Sami Zayn should have got the Intercontinental Championship, if that's the path that you really wanted to take, if this is the story that you really wanted to tell. I just don't like the fact that Sami Zayn is... And again, I can't say that. It almost feels somewhat like an agenda, like like he was made to be in the spot, and it just completely contradicts what they're trying to tell within the match in itself. The story in the match is supposed to tell you that Sami Zayn is this Rocky Balboa type of character. Even the announcers were saying it, right? He, they were trying to tell the story that this was Rocky and that Sami Zayn had no chance in hell of actually defeating Gunther as if 
Sami Zayn hasn't been in more prominent spots than the Gunther, as if Sami Zayn hasn't been in more compromising positions than the Gunther. The match last year for the Tag Team Championships, that has Sami Zayn in a more compromising position as far as, as, far as uh, feeling as if he was legitimately the underdog than this match right here. I don't like the fact that Sami Zayn feels like it feels like Triple H just took Sami Zayn and then just ran with the fact that he has the character of an underdog and that it fits the build of a WrestleMania. And because they're in Philadelphia, this is the path that they should go down. That's what kills me. I don't like the fact that Sami Zayn just kind of feels like they just took a person and just implement just implanted them within a spot that they don't deserve. And yeah. I'm gonna give this match a I'm gonna give this match a healthy star rating because of what they did in the match. But it's not to say that this match in itself was something that I felt really made me feel complete. It's not something I would say was satisfactory. It's not something I would say it made me feel like I was satisfied. It's like if you took a test and you studied really, really hard for it and you ended up getting a C. It's like, yeah, you passed, that's cool and all. But like I was kind of expecting this to be a uh, was expecting this to be an A, you know? I was expecting this to be an A plus as far as the story is concerned, but instead I got C's, right? And it doesn't even help the fact that the build for the match was underwhelming as shit also. You barely got any connection with Sami Zayn and Gunther. It was all about Sami Zayn essentially jumping over the head of the line and pretty much manipulating the guy to train him to put him in that spot. It just didn't feel right. Nothing about this match felt right and Gunther losing the belt underneath these circumstances I get it you have to get the belt for Gunther eventually because you're getting him prepared for the main event scene that's all well and good I get it the end of an era that's the whole theme for Wrestlemania and this just kind of adds up to the fact that I'm pretty sure that tomorrow night Roman Reigns is going to lose the belt also we get it it's the end of an era we're now approaching we're now approaching a new time in professional wrestling. I just don't like the fact that all of this feels like an agenda, like you're trying to force a new era on all of us rather than just naturally letting it roll out rather than just naturally letting it happen. And I feel like Gunther and Sami Zayn were a victim of circumstances. It's not to say that Sami shouldn't have won Intercontinental Championship. I just feel the timing is off. I feel the superstar in this position is off. I feel the story being told for the superstar is off. Everything about this feels off. Just because it was a good match doesn't necessarily mean that it was a good match. Does that make any sense? Anybody? But the damage is done. It is what it is. Sami Zayn is the new Intercontinental Champion. Gunther is no longer the Intercontinental Champion. And that's essentially it coming up next is the tag team match in the main event and uh i'll give my overall thoughts on this pay-per-view afterwards i won't talk about it now but we'll talk about it afterwards all right so that's the end of night one for wrestlemania folks um there's so much to get into with this match but first and foremost shout out to samantha irving oh my god she is probably the best announcer since ha since Howard Finkel. She killed it this entire night, but that main event, I can't stress it enough. I'm so serious when I say this. I never highlight the announcers. That's how you know this is serious. That was one of the best ring announcement jobs I think I've ever seen. Samantha Irving, she has a voice that she projects. She's very animated. And she just, she did it for the Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley match too. But in particular for this right here, bruh, she, she showed the fuck out. Shout out to Samantha Irving. Also, oh my God, the entrances between Rock, Roman, Seth, and Cody. I shit you not. The entrances went longer than probably the majority of the matches on this card. I was falling asleep during the entrances. I'm not even going to lie to you. That shit went way too long that was overkill what was also overkill is when they started this match and i bro it took them like a good 10 minutes to get started like to actually fully functionally get in the motion of the match it took them at least 10 solid fucking minutes and there's no exaggeration 10 minutes for real but it did pick up they started to have an attitude era-esque type of brawl fighting in the um audience cody and roman are in the staging area rock and seth they're in the audience they're all beating the crap out of each other this all started because the rock told the referee to not count <laughs> and if he did he was gonna fucking fire him he said he said some shit like i don't give a fuck or something like that dropping f-bombs all over the place shit bombs all over the goddamn place 
They start fighting in the audience. They made their way back to the ring. Where they start to brawl a little bit more before they got in the ring and it became a legitimate tag team match. Somewhat still kind of discombobulated because, again, Rock kept breaking all the fucking rules. He was pulling the referee out of the ring. He was allowing Roman to hit low blows. He hit Cody in the back with a fucking belt. He just was doing whatever the fuck Rock wanted to do. Like straight up corporation rules. Like, goddamn, you were thinking this was the bloodline match right here, the bloodline rules match right here. But nevertheless, though, Rock carried his own. He held his own. Now, granted, he was selling for the majority of the match. He was actually on offense. Like, and when he was on, well, I wouldn't say he was selling. I would say that he was on offense for the majority of the match. The selling that he did was actually not that bad. You know, he, again, he kept up his end of the bargain. I was actually kind of worried as to how Rock was going to perform because he's not his former self. He's a lot bigger. He's a lot slower. But he did good. He did solid. You know, Seth was selling the knee the entire time because Roman fucked up his knee in the beginning, like towards when he came back from the um from the uh, fighting in the ring attitude and stuff. He chopped him in the leg, and they started to uh, work over Seth Rollins' knee. Right, eventually, uh, C Cody got in the ring. Uh, they started to go back and forth. You got a double pedigree from Cody and Seth. You got some spears from Roman and The Rock. He actually speared The Rock by accident when Seth Rollins pushed Cody out of the way. And then we get to the climax of the match where uh, they both went to the announcement table. Rock and Roman, that is, or Roman and Rock and Cody, goddamn. And he seen Mama Rhodes and he was like, Mama Rhodes, this is your fault. I'm going to put your son through that table. The blood is going to be on your hands, yada, yada, yada. Uh, he was going to hit the rock bottom on Cody through the announcement table. And I was thinking like, oh, please, please. Every time Rock uses the rock bottom on the announcement table, it never comes out well. It never turns out well. And he's heavier now. Luckily, Seth held onto his leg and that fucking announcement table was reinforced. <laughs> uh, rock ended up taking the rock bottom himself from Cody Rose through an announcement table. And then immediately Roman speared Seth Rollins through the barricade. Right. So Seth was gone. For, he was done for the majority of this match. After that, they got back into the ring. Rock, uh, Cody Rose ended up hitting like three consecutive uh, crossroads on Roman Reigns. And when he was going to, well, he hit two consecutive. He was going to hit the third one and he backed up into the ropes and then Rock hit him in the back with his weight belt, right? Which caused Roman to hit a spear on him. Then he tagged in the Rock and then the Rock ended up hitting the Rock bottom on Cody Rhodes and then the people's elbow. And then he ended up pinning Cody and then he won the match. As I predicted, which thank God, because I think I was three for three for night. And <laughs> this actually broke my tie. So, yay, the majority of my predictions were right. Mm, grooving on your grave, nigga. Grooving on your grave. No, but seriously, though, this match was fun. It was fun. It started out really, 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 really boring. And as time went on, it progressively got better and better and better. And then it just like, outright just got really, really destructive towards the end of the match with all the chaos, the broken tables, the broken announcement, uh, the, the barricade, the announcers are going crazy. Like Cody, uh, Corey was playing like the middleman, like he was praising The Rock, but not so much praising Roman. Uh, fucking, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Pat McAfee was all over the bloodline's dick in this match, and Michael was playing the straight baby face guy, you know, siding with Cody and stuff the entire time. The crowd was pretty mixed on Cody and stuff, you know. Towards the end, though, they started to side with Cody Rose, so I would give him that. Uh, again, this match was really, really fun, and it played out the way that I thought it was gonna play out. It's just one of those deals now. Well, okay, <laughs> we're going into WrestleMania night two tomorrow, and it's gonna be bloodline rules. And we can only imagine how fucking chaotic that match is going to be. I wonder, though, is uh, Roman Spearing the Rock going to play into that match the next night? Because you got to think to yourself that none of this stuff is going to... Like, I got to think to myself, like, you know what would be really, really cool tomorrow night? If everybody that Roman wronged over the past four years, they all start coming out hitting finishers on Roman. Left and right. Kevin comes out, gets his revenge. Semi comes out, gets his revenge. Seth Rollins comes back out, gets his revenge. Uh, everybody, besides maybe Drew McIntyre, because he's a hill. But like I said, though, this match right here, it was fine for what it was. I'm happy that Rock carried his weight. I'm happy that Roman and Rock actually won this match because he just leads everything up in the air now. Now it makes it seem like Cody Rhodes is in trouble, you know, and I got to say this WrestleMania overall, if I had to give it a legitimate grade, uh, I'd probably go seven. 7 out of 10. And I think I'm being somewhat generous to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, this was very much a mixed bag uh, WrestleMania. You got, you got some good. Don't get it twisted. You got some good. But, 
you also had some bad also. The Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch match was fine for what it's worth. The latter match was fine for what it was worth. Um, you know, Gunther and Sammy, although I highly disagree with the booking of the match, it was fine for what it's worth. But in Rock and Roman, they actually delivered. But you had some stuff that really, really disappointed. You know, Jimmy and Jay was a disappointment. The ending to that Ray and Andrade versus Dominic Mysterio and Santos Escobar match, that was disappointing. Jay Cargill, Bianca Belair, and Naomi versus Damage Control, you can say it was disappointing, but <laughs> it wasn't disappointing for me. No, it wasn't. And like I said, WrestleMania is coming up tomorrow, but I would definitely say out of all the WrestleManias that we've seen so far, you know, with the night one being the premiere for uh, both of the WrestleManias, this is probably the worst of the bunch as far as night one. And who knows, maybe tomorrow night they might actually break their streak. They might actually break their record and they might usurp. They finally might get a victory. Night two might finally, finally, finally get a victory over night one. And just... Again, I'm, I'm very satisfied with the main event. And I think when you take that into context overall, you can probably look at that and say that that if the main event delivers, then I guess overall, that means that the entire show, I want to say the entire, nah, that's probably not the best way to look at it, but I would definitely say if the main event deliver, delivers, it leaves a better uh, lasting taste in your mouth. Um, I mean, I got I to gotta get some suggestions in the audience, though. I'm very curious as to how you felt about WrestleMania. Because I feel like for me, and I guess the overall theme for tonight, as I said earlier, if I had to give this a theme, a main idea, a main crux as far as the title for this, it'd be underwhelming. You know, I think that's the best way to describe this entire show outside of the main event. Um, a lot of the booking was very underwhelming. I felt like there was a lot more you could have done in some of these matches from a storyline standpoint. And just I felt like there was there was more to get out of. I, I feel like maybe some of these matches could have went a little bit longer. I felt like maybe, you know, if the build was a little bit stronger, that maybe, you know, it would have maybe made up for some of the stuff that I feel wasn't really necessarily justified in the match as far as the booking is considered. And like I said, you know, it was just a mixed bag. If I if I had to say anything about this, this was a mixed bag. I'm, like I said, I'm, I think I'm being generous even with the seven overall rating. But like I said, they have time to make up for this. They have time to just kind of make up for this entire WrestleMania um, average. And, you know, I'll give you my average overall once we get to WrestleMania Night 2 tomorrow and we get the main event for uh, Roman and, and Cody Rose. I'm hoping that we get something great. I hope either, I'm, I'm actually hoping that we get some shenanigans, some Vince McMahon-esque type of booking. And uh, just, again, overall, though, definitely a mixed bag. But, you know, that's it, though. That's it for WrestleMania Night 1. Let me hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Oh, Devontae, you're shitting on WrestleMania. You're shitting on WWE. No, I'm not. I said it was fine for what it was worth. It's just the things that I, I mean, by all rights, tell me why I'm wrong if you want to. Tell me all the sentiments that I gave to the show. Tell me why none of it made any sense. Because I'm very keen to hear some opinions down in the comment section below as to why I didn't make any sense and let me know how you feel about the booking as far as the main event is considered and what's going to happen tomorrow night and man, I guess this is just a to be continued right on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z but with that being said though as always my name is Devonte, and I'll be back tomorrow for night two of Wrestlemania as always deuces P eyes